I remember reading about this when it, when it first came out in, in the papers. Um, and it was such a shock to us, because obviously we all know and love you from, you know, from your, your, your years of being on the TV. Tell us exactly the, the build-up to the moment where you, you went into, into hospital after what felt like you'd been a little bit poorly, mm. and then things just very, very quickly changed direction for you. I think, I think that was the scariest thing, from one yes. moment sitting, feeling quite strong, quite well... Quite normal. Full of Totally, yeah. Not not a hint on the horizon. I'm quite a healthy person. Yeah. To starting not, I noticed I couldn't go upstairs, and I thought, wow, I'm really unfit. And then I started the swelling, which some people may have read about, yeah. and that all happened really quickly within about ten days. I mean, I've lost a lot more weight now than normal, but I mean, I went from a size eight to ten to I looked five or six months pregnant quickly in mm. ten days, and. Obviously, the breathlessness went with that. Yeah. And initially, the GPs couldn't... They sent me for some kind of, you know, routine tests. Didn't really know what was going on. And it got worse and worse. I tried to call the GPs. They didn't have space to see me. Um, and it got to the point, one Saturday, I had to ring... I was in distress. Yeah. And I had to ring 999. And really, it went from kind of 0 to 60 at that point. Mm. Um, I didn't know at the time, but I nearly died across that 48 hours. And that was fluid around the lungs, which hadn't been detected, okay. but was increasingly stopping the heart from being able to perform. Yeah. We didn't know that was happening, and a um, wonderful surgeon got in there in time and, and drained that. Yeah. And it was only afterwards one of his colleagues said, he saved your life, and I was like, oh, wow, that's a bit of a... To, to go from that, that, to accelerate that quickly from, yeah. you know... I was still working. I was yeah, still yeah. trying to kind of hold down, a, a, I was in rehearsal, so I was still trying to... Oh, you, you sort of put it out of your mind, you think, mm -hmm. ooh. You start Googling and you think, oh, yeah. maybe it's a hernia. I'm really yeah. hoping it might be a hernia. Did, yeah. did it cross your mind that it might be cancer? I think <sighs> once I started to put breathless and abdominal swelling in, it was starting not to look great. Yeah. Mm. So I thought, OK, I'm not going to play amateur mm. medic mm. here. Yeah. Mm. I need to get people who can really diagnose yeah. these things properly because otherwise I'm just going to alarm myself. Of course. Mm. You know, of course. that's not helpful. Um, so, but it wasn't until, because then, I think while I was in hospital, they start to sort of say, well, we're just going to do some tests just to count certain things out. Yeah. But I was on a cardiac ward. I wasn't on a... That was the ward I was yeah. on. So, um, yeah. But, the I mean, six just... months only. I mean, I'm interested. How does it feel for you to be sitting here, to be speaking publicly, to be hearing Andrea say, you know, this is Leah, and Leah's got terminal yeah. cancer, and so, you know... I just can't imagine how that feels for you. It's bizarre, because ideally, no, I wouldn't want to be... Mm. Much as you're all lovely, I wouldn't want to be... You know, you don't think, oh, I've had this and I'm going to go and tell the whole world mm. about it. It, it mm. was never meant to happen like that. It was by a series of... I think I was saying to somebody earlier, the press got hold of it. We still don't kind of know how they got hold... But they did, mm. which has turned out to be a plus and a minus. And the point is, it's now it's out. Ideally, I'd love to shut the doors and go, OK, I'm just going to go on with my healing, but people are responding. Mm. I think people sometimes need to see something to identify with. or, or I, I don't know. I'm you, not entirely you sure. You talk so positively. I mean... Why you, do you feel... You do. And, really and, and I've read your positive, blog, which and if nobody weird. has, you've got to read it. And, um, and you, you, it reads exactly as Leah oh, speaks now. And, it's so, and I can absolutely mm. tell that you will be helping so many yeah. people at, yeah. at home. But, Leah, you what do you yourself, feel positive it's... about? Um, life. Wow. Yeah. I feel positive. You, you get told that, and they're telling you, we can't do anything, we can't operate, we can't give you radiation, we could give you six rounds of palliative chemo, and I'm thinking, OK, OK, what, what do I do now with this information? I can't yeah. change the diagnosis, mm. but I can, <clears throat> I, what I can do is choose how I respond. So initially, no, you're in complete meltdown. Of course. Right? Mm. And we needed a couple... Of, I didn't tell anyone, my partner, obviously, for two or three days, just while I kind of got... Process. Th it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, before you decide how you tell your close family, how can I tell them in a way that... that is mm. not positive and not kind of blanking things out, but that we're all going to move together with this mm. in a positive way, and I'm going to choose 
to make my decisions positive ones. I'm going to mm. choose to embrace life. I'm going to choose to be thankful that I have life. I, I might not have had life. I yeah. might not have. And then suddenly, all those things you used to worry about, all the rubbish. All the little petty I'm being careful of my language. Yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> all the stuff that, that you think is, oh, important, you know, and causes you it just, I just go, I haven't got the energy to deal with that stuff. Mm, no yeah. offence, but I'm not going to deal with that. But has I'm going to appreciate it, have, the good have stuff. You had any, have you made any changes since your diagnosis? Massive, you think, massive. I mean, people talk about lessons that come to yeah. you, and I often wonder, is that, is there... Oh, it's, it's, a complete, it's a complete work? wake up, and I think I'm very lucky. I've talked before about how my response was one of absolute anger. Mm. And it's fury. How dare you tell me this? How yeah. dare... Which is why, as well, I didn't want someone to guesstimate. Yeah what they thought my prognosis would be. It's based on statistics that could be out of date, mm -hmm. that could be not about my age, not my, about my specific sort of cancer. I don't want to be a statistic. I want to be what Dr. Bernie Siegel, who's written some amazing books in the 70s, calls an exceptional patient, mm -hmm. where you defy what they've set out for you. And it, I don't know if I'm defying or not defying, but it means I'm going to have a nice life along the way. Yeah. I don't wake up every morning feeling fearful. I wake up feeling grateful, feeling happy, feeling excited. Yeah.